So guys, I have a question for y'all. Okay. I don't know who would like to go first. Uh, since James spoke up first, we're going go. to ask. Okay. What? What, James? And everyone else can start furiously thinking. Oh boy. James, what would you think? Penton smells like. <laughs> I didn't have to be like anything awful or crazy or gross or anything, but just a certain smell that if someone was around them a lot, they would associate with Penton. Vanilla. Mm. Lizards do have a smell, scaly things. Uh, he's uh, not a lizard. So it's kind of nutty. He's not a lizard. You're a dragon. He's a nut. Blood <laughs> fellow. Sometimes, sometimes he feels like a nut. Spell scales. You've so got much. scales. I still say vanilla. Um, I'm going to say, let's go with uh, vanilla. I like a vanilla hazelnut with a hint of ozone. Hazelnut with a hint of ho- is the ozone the magic or? Well, that's like you know because he's like very electricity based. So mm, he is. He really is. <laughs> he smells like um, a Starbucks in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, it is not. It, it, and I want to be clear: this is not up to anyone else. Y- y'all can certainly chip in, but it's, it sounds it's, like uh, a weird country character. song. <laughs> well, I'm in a Starbucks in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> My truck uh, broke down and my dog died. So let's move down the, the list. Uh, Isabel, uh, what do you think Marezzi smells like? Um, I'm going to say... Uh, I think her, her chain mail would probably smell tinny. Um, mm-hmm. and, and tinny, leather, and just the faintest whiff of body odor if you catch her right. Mm-hmm. Uh, she certainly does not bathe over frequently. Uh, un- un- despite the many jokes about uh, barbarians, uh, you know, uh, orcs are not necessarily disgusting, uh, but they certainly do not bathe as much as as other races. Uh, so I mean, we're all adventurers. We're not coming across oh, yeah. um, hot baths. Yeah, you're not. You you all you all don't smell great. I mean, y'all do wash in streams and stuff, but and you have the advantage of traveling by Audrey. But yeah. When y'all come into town, you're pretty ripe. <laughs> um, I, and, I would like uh, to think speaking that of ripe, no, I'm just kidding. Pay for pre- uh, Penton to prestidigitate us quite often. Uh, <laughs> I don't have that. Oh, you don't? I, you've done prestidigitation have before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. you you did, Long it, you time did ago. it with uh, the pi- the pistol. Oh whistle. yeah, yeah, but you know that's only like and, one uh, time. And this blood isn't splatters. Like, this isn't five e. I can't be doing it over and over again. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, well, we'll 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 uh, keep that in mind. But moving on to distant bells, what do you think distant bells smells like? Um, so bells, being a thief, um, and his his overall life lived so far, uh, he smells a little bit like oil, just the faintest faintest hint of oil. Because he's used to oiling his leather, his armor, and, and and things to darken it up and keep it supple. So there's a mm-hmm. slight tinge of oil. It's not overpowering. It's just, you know, if, if the wind is blowing in the right direction and he runs past you, there's a... Mm-hmm. It smells like oil. Hmm. I like that. And also with the various chemicals that he sometimes deals with, I, I could see that as well. Uh, and moving on to Athora. Athora, what do you think Athora... Um, Riley, what do you think Athora smells like? Um, I think she smells a tiny bit like um, wet fur, but not in like a really strong way. But she has the cloak and all her hair. Maybe a tint mm-hmm. of metal in there from her swords and her armor and all that. Okay. Uh, I like that very much. And, and do you think, uh, uh, do you think most mm-hmm. um, tieflings have just like that tiny tiny hint of brimstone probably maybe mm. she covers or it you up. could say or you could say that she doesn't uh mm. she might be different that's true because she's so icy that's true uh she is though though only recently uh <laughs> none, of, none of those things had manifested before uh and finally last but not least ticks what do you think uh dare what do you think ticks smells like uh ticks would smell well, you know like an adventurer but with uh Birch and sandalwood incense around him. Birch and sandalwood. I, I I don't know why, but for some reason I imagine Tix has like little bags of potpourri 
under his armpits just <laughs> all the time. Tich, all of the Tich time. Has, yeah, bags of sandalwood. Oh, a little sandalwood, sand, uh, uh, sawdust, and, you know, smells like incense from his prayers. And yeah, he, he applies it liberally. Well, we don't we we don't role play that, but uh, except a couple of times. But uh, he prays for an hour every day to regain his spells and such. Uh, but there's and there's a reason exactly Os- that means. There's a reason Osaka didn't take him hunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the all the deer are like ooh sandalwood. Uh, <laughs> right. uh, no reason for any of that, <clears throat> or is there? Chafing Armor, a podcast, episode 146, The Festival of the Sea. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I'm your host and lovable Dungeon Master, Michael Corley. And with me tonight, smelling like hazelnut, is James. James, tell us who you will be playing. Hey, everybody. I'm James, and I'm playing Penton Chalice, a spell scale sorcerer. Wonderful. And with that chainmail tin, we've got Izzy. Izzy, tell us who you will be playing. Hello, everyone. I'm Izzy college student, and I will be playing Marezi McGraw, half-orc barbarian, barely read, can read. <laughs> barely can read, but getting there, getting there. And also, we have with us Lee. Lee, tell us about this oily, oily character. G'day, everybody. My name is Lee, and I am playing Distant Bells, the Kenku Rogue. Yes, indeed. And also, with the slightly appealing scent of wet fur, we have uh, Riley. Riley, tell us who you'll be playing. Hi, I'm Riley and I'm playing Athora Greyfield, a fighter tiefling. Wonderful. And also with the with the sensor uh, swinging back and forth, we have the, the scent of birch and sandalwood. It is Dare. Dare, tell us who you'll be playing. Greetings, everyone. I am Dare and I am playing Tix Birchmanson, your favorite gnome paladin. Now, when we last left the characters, a whole lot had happened. Uh, they, uh, we split the party, as you are never supposed to do, as they attempted to recover the second half of the Staff of Seraphin underneath a magically augmented necropolis in Kalimvor. The, the necropolis began to collapse. The Sand Swallow Sea began to come inside. Everyone was going to die. And three separate things happened. One, poink! Uh, a certain Kinku rogue who had recently acquired a certain cloak. What what cloak had you acquired there, uh, Distant Bells? The Cloak of Stars. Yes, which, among other things, can instantly teleport the uh, wearer to the astral plane. Uh, he has recently returned. We're going to get back to that in a moment. Uh, as far as Penton. Penton, uh, you had stayed behind to help Taka, the monk. Uh, to get them them to safety, uh, and you were able to do so by using a very clever use of a certain spell. What spell did you use straight up into the air? I believe it was a uh, Dimension Door. Yes, uh, not once, but twice uh, to, to successfully uh, get up into the air and then use those amazing new dragon wings of yours to uh, literally uh, fly to safety, or glide, I should say, to safety uh, where you are now. And uh, the, the last of the adventurers, Merezi and Tix and uh, Athora, had transported uh, in an emergency using the help of the necromancer Gorluin uh, to the ruined city of uh, Zintel Keep, where they had gone on a quest to recover a gauntlet of Bane, the, the, the god who had been died, uh, which is a relative term for a god, uh, many years ago and use the power of that gauntlet to return back to uh, Kalimvor in time for the deadline, which is fast approaching, to uh, reunite the staff before the Mind Flayer six its hugely augmented kraken that has been infected. It is now a crack lithid. Thank you, I believe, James. You're welcome. Uh, to destroy 
all of Kalimvor and many other cities. So where we open, normally I don't do that much backstory, but man, there was a lot going on. Uh, where we open, we find Penton. Penton, you have seen to the comfort of Taka, who had been recovering from their horrible ordeal, taking months trapped underneath uh, Kalimvor in their in a in a uh, prison of their own making, uh, and, and it seemed to their comfort. And now you are finally have a few moments to yourself. Uh, what what would you <laughs> something you would do? Um, well, let's see. Um, I would probably spend. Um at least a short while um, talking into the eyeball and checking in with Scald and seeing how she's doing and letting her know I'm mm-hmm. okay. Um, and uh, just a general check-in um, and uh, maybe tell her to uh, let her know, like let, let her uh, tell her to let the King know if she has a chance to um, what our status is as well. Well, as you found out at your uh, trip to uh, Maskate is that she is now effectively in charge of the magical defenses of uh, Maskate. Uh, so she has a direct line to the king. Uh, so she says that she absolutely will. She's still very, very busy, but she says that the defenses are reaching completion, which is very exciting. Uh, something that they've been working on for months uh, to prepare against uh, various attacks that they suspect are coming. There are rumors of war, but there are also rumors of everything going on with y'all. Uh, so it's it's good that you checked in with her. Uh, as you finish your, your call, as, the, as call in comes on, and you close your hand over the uh, doll's eye, that's when um, two things begin to happen simultaneously. One, a huge portal opens. And when I say huge, it's about maybe like 15 feet high. And so the stone, everything around you like vanishes, like just, there's just the portal there and you can see an open field and coming through it is a Thora, uh, uh, Morezi with Aki and also with, uh, Tix with his, uh, ward as well. Uh, his, his, uh, obsidian, uh, rock Elemental, who is quite unusual, are all just casually walking through. And in fact, yeah. you can even see it's slightly a different time of day because it's several hours north um, as they are they are all uh, coming through this portal. Well, uh, Fenton's, you know, taken aback for a second and, you know, watches them walk through, kind of tries to guess where they're at just by, like, the environment that they're in. Um uh, but I'm sure they'll, you know, let me know eventually. Um, hey, okay. hey, everybody. Um, are, are, is everybody all right? My lizard's good, yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice. been an experience getting here. I, I get, well, yeah, we've, I'm sure we've all had an interesting journey. Um, uh, I see um, uh, Bells isn't with you. He's not back here yet? I uh, haven't seen him, no. Okay. And as if on cue, <laughs> um, there is a sound. Uh, it, it's really, it is the tiny, uh, after this giant port, and as soon as y'all walk through, and you could just see the sort of the shadowy image of Gorluin raising her hand in, in you know, goodbye, and you can see uh, the enormous form of Chop uh, next to her, nuzzling next to her as the portal uh, she she closes her fist and in front of her floating is the the gauntlet of bane it also closes uh, she's not actually wearing it let me make that <laughs> clear <laughs> uh, she closes her her fist and it closes and then the portal zhoom, closes uh, and then there's this sudden like ringing of silence you didn't realize like how much energy was being made by this portal um, and that is when there's a little just a, just the tiniest little pop sound uh, as something pops into the room. Uh, but it is not distant bells. Uh, it is... Uh, and I, I don't have any other way to put this. It is a stuffed animal of distant bells. <laughs> uh, so... Um, 
Oh, it's so cute. Is it big? Is it so big? It's threat. It is very small. It is about uh, 18 inches high. Is it, it moving, is or is it just lying there? That is a very good question. <laughs> Lee? Should we... <laughs> uh, it stands up and dusts itself off. Oh, oh awesome. <laughs> I want one. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we have one. <laughs> oh my god! And these will be a, these will be available on the Chafing Armor merch. No, I, I wish no. that was true. But my god, if so. we had someone who could make these. <laughs> that is awesome. Bells, um, is is that you, you? You can see the you you see the the cloak that Bells was wearing uh, in in felt form. Even the there are five little felt stars or six. Uh, where the actually they of, uh, can't see it because it's under my normal cloak. Oh, that's true. That is that is under. Uh, but there's the bulge where his backpack should be. Uh, you can see like like toy representations of his actual you know equipment. Even the uh, chain. Uh, the 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 or you describe it for me so I don't say it wrong, uh, Lee. On your uh, ri- on your leg. Oh. Uh... Yeah, there's a there's a there's a a, a bulge, a, a very large bulge in felt on his left leg. Mm-hmm. Uh, where where he had always had a shackle there that y'all had just it, not really asked a lot of questions about because it was like kind of maybe rude to ask. It about never comes up in conversation. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but even that is there, and it's uh, it's very yep. everything is very obvious in this in this form. It would seem. Mm-hmm. Uh, it literally looks like someone made a perfect doll of uh, distant bells. Oh Tix God. goes over and picks him up. <laughs> looks at him, stares at him, turns him upside down, turns him right side up, and is just fascinated by this. <laughs> uh, you are no longer the shortest member of the uh, team. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it, there is a weight to the doll like like the way if you think about like some plush animals who have like almost like that sand in them oh uh, please like please not- let me weigh exactly the same as I always do I'm just <laughs> oh, in a smaller amazing. package just, uh, just the same mass <laughs> that would be amazing but no it, he, so he does weigh a few pounds he's not like just like filled with stuffing um, but there there's something in there but but he's still very very light I mean you easily he's only weighs a few pounds well, he's probably got sand in uh, his butt so you can put him on a shelf that's right. That's right. That's, that makes it more collectible. Uh, and his and, and, no, and don't his, turn me into a marketable plushie. <laughs> and his eyes are enormous, by the way. Uh, oh yeah, to the rest of his body. So he's a stuffed anime Kenku now. Yep. Is he chibi? Yep. Is his head really big? <laughs> it's not. It's not chibi level, but his eyes are disproportionately larger than they were in his regular head. They are, awesome. they are stuffed animal proportions. Um, Petten's going to crouch down a bit. Uh, hey, hey, buddy. Um, uh, what? Can you can you still talk? Make noises? Anything? You could shake your head yes or no. There's... Bells just maintains what is obviously very disdainful eye contact with ticks. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, uh, we will find a way to get you cured of this as soon as possible. We is there? Do you have any leads? Is there any any place you want us to take you? This is incredible. You could put me down for a start. Ah, so you can talk. Okay, mm-hmm. Tix quickly sets him down uh, and apologizes. Sorry, this, this is just. Fascinating. I've never seen any any witchcraft like this before. And I, I do want to uh, obviously, duh, this is magical in nature. But uh, quite to your point, neither you Tix nor you uh, Pinson have seen anything like this. And, and you've heard of like polymorph and you know different kinds of shape changing and stuff, but never anything like this. 
Okay, so yeah, it's not a, it's not your run of the mill polymorphing or anything like that. It doesn't seem like. No, no. Uh, I mean, you've heard of people being turned into objects, and you've heard of obviously people being turned into animals. That is, you know, it is a powerful spell, but it is a known spell. But right. you've never heard of someone being turned into a sentient doll. Uh, there, there are stories of like souls being removed and put into things, but they, it doesn't work like this. <laughs> right, and he's like not like a magic jar or anything like that. So exactly, um, exactly. Okay. Bell's kind of again dusts himself off from the kind of adjusts things from where the cack-handed gnome kept grabbing him. And uh, just kind of looks around and is just kind of quickly goes through what happened and, and just sort of says, this is, as far as I can tell, something to do with being soul bound or soul chained or something. I don't know. I, I, I was normal. Then something big and nasty crushed me into this. And now... This is this is all there is to it. Um, yeah, it has what its you, perks. What do you mean by big and nasty? Did you get a look at it? I, I, it was big and it was pitch black and it was it had a weird like centaur form ish, but that was about it. It was it didn't really have many details to it. Does this ring any bells? Um. And uh, just in case you want to tell them or not, uh, uh, Bubbles actually identified it based on your description. Uh, or I can't remember if Rainbow Boy did, uh, but that was actually a Fane, uh, which are P-H-A-N-E. Uh, okay. They are powerful and extremely chaotic immortal beings. So, yeah, uh, Bells were just kind of... So I, I ran into two astral travelers one of them wears like a helmet and they pilot this ship i've never seen them before but apparently they know you guys uh, um but uh something bubbles and rainbow bubbles, boy oh, i don't know rainbow, rainbow boy yeah Whoa. yeah those those two they, 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 astral dreadnought with them yeah th th that's where we were the astral dreadnought i think um in in a in a fortress it's a long story i'm not going to go into it I'm a little uh, not myself, shall we say? Huh. But uh, yeah, we we uh, it was a journey with myself and 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 Rainbow Boy to rescue uh, Bubbles uh, from some well from an illithid who had oh. used uh, magic of some kind and and kind of recognizes. I barely remember the episode. I apologize, but. Bell's not Bell's rep remembers it perfectly, but he kind of mm -hmm. he's using he's using magic we all recognize to control the 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 Gith Yankee and then uh, the chain around his neck broke and then the control broke and now I'm guessing he's dead. But uh yeah, we had to make a quick getaway and, and, and now now I'm here like this and I don't know how to fix it. Hmm. Yep. It wasn't our our the 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 lithid we know and love is it was it or is it just another random uh, it was uh, dude it was just a random lithid that I know of yeah, he, he was part of the cult I think one. but that's about it he probably uh, would have there, spent there five was, minutes floating at you if it was there was baleful blue glowing going on uh, so you you certainly think that it was related um, you know you, distant bells hasn't had as much exposure to that as the rest of the group but you have had some. AKA none. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but y'all, but you've also been hanging out with these people for months. Yeah. Um, uh, the better part of a year. So you've pro they've probably shared uh, various stories, and the Githyanki <laughs> were being controlled by the Mind Flayer, and their eyes were glowing a baleful blue. Yeah, the fact that every time somebody mentions glowing eyes, at least one of this party keeps going, were they baleful blue by any chance? <laughs> yeah, Bells is probably going to pick up on that and go, yeah, the eyes were blue, not red or green or pink or any other color we've run into. They were definitely blue. Does that ring any bells to you guys? I think it does. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, at that moment, Some distant ones, maybe. Uh, at that moment, the uh, your door. So, Pinson, you are in a. Um, a I hate very you, Lizzie, large, for that. <laughs> I, I didn't hear what she said. 
I said, did that might ring any bells for you guys? And Izzy, under uh, her breath, said, might have some distant ones, maybe. Uh, mm, I wasn't going to let that pass. No. <laughs> um, so the the place that y'all are in right now is is like a, it's where like a very fancy person would be received at the alderman's uh, estate. Uh, so it's a very large room. You know, think about like a uh, like a honeymoon suite. So it's it's big, uh, with okay. multiple chambers and such. Um, and the entrance door is kicked in very loudly, uh, and in comes in uh, the constable for uh, for Kalimvor, uh, who y'all have met before, Olfar Onyxward. Uh, he has a bristle cut hair. He has a, a long duster on that is flung back, revealing um, two crisscross bandoleros of knives. Something is materializing on his back as he is coming in. Um, he uh, takes the knives, pulls them out, and he hurls them at all of you. And behind him, by the way, are coming are shuffling in city guard. And uh, the the look on his face is incandescent rage. Just if you imagine the angriest person in the world, that is what the look on his face is right now. Uh, he is going to get a surprise round. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, Merezi and Athora are closest to the back because y'all were talking the least. Ooh, a natural one. Got to roll those Oops. percentage. Got to roll those percentage. That applies to everybody. This Don't would be hilarious. angry. Yeah, that's just a normal miss, though. However, one of the knives does strike you, Athora, because he rolls a natural 20. Uh, so he strikes with the natural 20 of the knife. Uh, who rolls a 1. So uh, that's uh, 3. So that's 6 points of damage that you take, uh, Athora, as it, as it wedges between uh, where your shoulder meets uh, your breastplate. It, it hurts. Don't get me wrong. Uh, because... Getting hit by a knife is not great. Um, so we can absolutely go to combat round. However, if anyone wants to do anything before we hit full combat, uh, I want to give you a chance to do that right now. Uh, One question. Should my HP be at full? Yes, everyone's HP is at full. House rules. Um, I put Aki down. Uh, okay, yep. It's like It's like the guy putting up his glasses first, you know. <laughs> you wouldn't need a guy with glasses, would you? Good, because I'm taking them <laughs> off. <clears throat> Tix uh, casts uh, Sanctuary and immediately steps up in front of the sheriff and says, Wait! We're not attacking. We're not doing anything. You know us. Uh, We're here to help. And uh, someone uh, whose name is uh, Dare pointed out to me that barbarians actually cannot be surprised. Uh, which is very correct. So uh, you, they missed anyway, but uh, uh, Izzy, I would like you to describe to me when you had two different daggers flung at the back of your head, what uh, you did when your danger sense kicked in. Marezzi put down Aki. <laughs> <laughs> they missed me. Yeah, just you're just like, Nyip! and they just went fung, fung, over the top and, and thud, thud <laughs> into the wall uh, behind you. Um, exactly. All right. Uh, so you... Uh, Step in front. Uh, I told you something is materializing behind him. He reaches behind. As he reaches behind, fully formed, a great maul comes oh. out from behind. Uh, and he brings it down on... He's so angry. Normally, I have people roll to see whether or not they notice that that shield is up. But he doesn't even notice. He just brings it down on your shield. Which, of course, it has you know roughly 10,000 hit points. Um, does nothing. But... Uh, it does make him pause for just a second, and he, he looks right into your eyes, uh, and he points at you, Tix, and he goes, Traitor! Uh, pause for a moment. We're not <laughs> fighting. I'm not drawing any weapons. We're not attacking. We're not betraying anybody. Stop and pause for a moment. Before this gets out of hand. I would like you to make a diplomacy check. I can do that. Mm-hmm. But he is pretty mad, just FYI. That's a Point. 19 plus... 
Uh, diplomacy is... Uh, so that's a 27. 27. Okay. Uh, he's pretty mad, but that's a pretty good roll. Uh, and you are you spread your hands out in that universal sign of, of non-combatant. Uh, and he does pause for a second, but he snaps his fingers behind him, and the guards flank out to either side, blocking y'all's uh, exit. And uh, literally, you know, do that thing where they hold out their spears in front of them, uh, ready to advance and charge. And... Uh, he, since you're facing him, Tix, he turns to you and he says, How long have you been working for Bane? Uh, oh. We haven't. We've killed all of his servants. Uh, we've been fighting against him. We've been making fun of him and his incompetence. We do not serve Bane. You know very well that I serve Garl Glittergold. I am a paladin of Garo Glitter Gold, and therefore I cannot lie about that. You know this. Whatever information you've gotten is erroneous. Now, let's settle down before this gets out of hand. And you know we're capable of making this out of hand. So stop. Uh, and he reverses his Great Maul and drives it into the ground, and the stone cracks. Uh, and, and this, y'all had gotten the impression before, as I said, that like sometimes, you know, constables are rich, stuck up noblemen who get promoted. And sometimes they're ex-adventurers who decide to settle down. And he seems like one of those. Um, and he, he grabs hold of his leather jerkin and he pulls it down and stares you right in the eye. And on his chest is a tattoo of the gloved hand of Bane. And he goes, you can't tell me that I didn't feel the power of Bane in this room. Um, pa- uh, just, sorry, sorry just, just before we go ahead, uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I just want to do something. I just want to clarify something for, for my, sure. me as well and just see if I can pull this off. Um, there's that feather that I gave to the family that happens mm-hmm. to live here. Mm-hmm. That's two way, right? It is, and you also before right before the uh, ceiling collapsed <laughs> and you almost all drowned. You got a message saying that they were worried about the upcoming festival. That's right. While but all this is, is going way, on, yes. while this is all, all this is going on, as soon as this kicked off, I want to send one out to them, saying to them to quickly come to this location. Okay. Uh, and, and by the way. They are, they, this is where they're staying, so they're in a different part of this building. Ah, yes, so um, that, that's... So I'm that, literally they're not going, far, is what I'm saying. We, we, please come to this location, and uh, both of you, this is for the mother and the child, um, there's something you need to see, and we need your assistance. Okay. Um, a Penton is going to kick on his glow, and he's going to like step gingerly toward... Uh, the constable and say, um, oh, oh, I think we're in the middle of a really, really big misunderstanding right now. Um, I I get what you're saying. I, I, I hear you that you were feeling some some power that's ill sourced. I get it. But we were um, our, our friends here were, were using something that we st- that they took from one of these bad people in order to get back here. That's all. There was no, it wasn't anything bad. It was just a means to an end. He takes a very deep breath and he kind of looks at all of you. And then he kind of, he, he, I mean, he's leading the guard. So he keeps his composure, but you see him like visibly sag and he seems to age like 10 years in a moment. And he leans against his great maul and he snaps his fingers and he says, everyone out of the room, we need to talk. Uh, it, obviously, he's talking to the guards. Uh, keep keep watch out front. Stay frosty. Anything could be happening. And he um, turns to you, Athora. And he bows 
and he says, Ma'am, I would like to apologize for the injury that I have caused you. Ah, uh, it's okay. It's stabbing's a <laughs> hazard of the life. <laughs> uh, Tix and, goes and, over and lays on hands on her and heals her for whatever damage. Damage. Yeah, up to sixteen points. Uh, and the 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 there there's there's just a feeling of uh, gar glitter gold when you when you heal and it kind of flows through the room a little bit and seems to reconfirm to him what what you had said and he kind of sighs again and he goes I I do apologize but you must understand I am from Zental Keep and I understand the power of Bane and the power that that cult has and when I registered an intrusion of a Bane portal in the Alderman's home. I had no choice but to assume the worse. Well, we bring good tidings of glad joy. Zental Keep <laughs> is gone. The Cancer Crone is gone. The gods, in particular, Garl Glittergold and Bahamut and... Uh, the Raven Queen and even uh, Loth have seen that Bane will be no longer a threat. I wish I could believe you on that very last point, but it it does seem that I have um, slightly overreacted. At that point, um, Petnyak uh, and her mother uh, come in, uh, Distant Bells, and there is a solid beat of three seconds of just nothing. And then fortunately, none of you are at danger of having your ear burst, eardrums burst because, and I won't do it for our, our listeners sake, but the sound <laughs> that comes out of Petniak when she sees you distant. Bells. <laughs> is uh, beyond mortal kin. It is this, and Bells. it's so fluffy! <laughs> Bells, uh, I I kind of want, because all of this has happened, but uh, I'm, I'm fairly sure that uh, the, the, the sheriff himself is still not entirely aware of exactly what's going on, but Bells sure. is going to walk... Remember, Bells is a stuffed toy now. <laughs> yep, yep. Bells is going to walk directly at Petnyak with the sound of circus music, um, and 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 just yeah, jump into her arms. Uh, she grabs you and squeezes you next to her uh, stuffed owlbear, and is just in inconsolable joy, just just transcendent joy as she squeezes the, the, the tar out of the stuffing out of you, metaphorically, fortunately. And things calm down considerably. A, a few moments later, actually, the alderman comes in as well and uh, mentions very casually about maybe repairing some of her damaged uh, you know, home, since he burst through and everything. Uh, <laughs> but she seems relatively calm. Um... And he asks, basically he asks you all to explain what what has been happening. Uh, because as you find out that he, as part of being part of Zental Keep, uh, he was actually part of the cult of Bane many years ago. And That explains when, the tattoo. Yeah, and when... Um, as, he, as he puts it in, in a as ashamed as he can muster, I was a very different person then. Uh, but when when the portal opened, he felt like literally Bane himself was coming into Kalimfor. And so he assumed that a full-scale attack was happening. Well, as as Bells and, and Morezzi have d d discovered during the, their rescue of Pat and her mother. Her mother was on the council, I think. 
Yes, um, he was on the council. So, I don't know if she was on the council during the time of this man's arrangement while in, in Zental Keep, but uh, maybe she can verify the fact that Zental Keep is no more, and, mm-hmm. and the circumstances for that, given that that was where they lived. Um, one of the things I... I didn't do it during the episode, and I'm really upset about it, but I wanted to... I, I wanted to bring all of the stuff that was in that hidden locker with me so that she at least had the records and things that were in there. And I I swear I'd said it, but it maybe got edited out or I just didn't. But, yeah, I don't know. But all, all the documents, the letters that the mayor had sent to her about, you know, the whole place being corrupt and that he would show her how safe the sewers are and... That was the last one before she got kidnapped, but yeah, I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. But in the meantime, I, I'm basically here to keep Pet calm and and distracted uh, while the adults talk. Um, that's that's basically it. Um, I was hoping they'd get here earlier to defuse the situation, but even so, perhaps the mother, um, whose name escapes me, again... Uh, can at least participate in a conversation, start verifying things about Zentor Keep and, and, and etc. Since she was involved. Yes, uh, Osphalor. That's her, yes. Is uh, the mother, and uh, she is very helpful, one, being on the council. Uh, their times did not intersect. Like, he vaguely remembers her because she was uh, a, a rich person in town but she wasn't part of the council when he was there you know he's old he's like maybe in his like late 50s uh so he's been out and about and adventuring in the meantime but he does remember her and also she gives testimony that she was about to be sacrificed to bring back bane uh and that you and marezi saved her uh and pet so that goes a long way uh, Mostly Marezzi, who bodily picked them up and jogged out of the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. You, you both you both played their part, but Marezzi in a rage, which was yes. impressive. Yes, uh, as you were you were trying to keep them calm while raging at the same time, Marezzi. <laughs> uh, that that episode trick. came out recently, and I I enjoyed it very much. Um, so, uh, bottom line is things have calmed down. Uh, he puts his Great Maul behind and it sort of slowly fades out of existence as far as Back you can to tell. Back Yep. And the, uh, ah, and the, and he, uh, closes up his duster and, and re, re-puts up his daggers. And he says, I, I, um, before all of this, uh, before things turned a little south, I was going to ask all of you for your assistance, uh, uh, I know that the time uh, you have about a week and a half uh, before the deadline is reached, uh, oh, but there may be things. Oof. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot has happened. Uh, however, we've been away uh, three weeks. Dang. Well, a lo- again, a lot has happened mm. um, since then, uh, and however, things may accelerate very quickly. So, uh, but he says that tomorrow is the festival of the salt of the sea, which is the Christmas of this town. Uh, it is the celebration of their God Isis. Uh, it is a special ceremony and he is terrified that something is going to go horribly wrong. And he wants to ask all of you, especially now that he doesn't want to kill you, uh, if you would help him with the security for the ceremony because he suspects that shenanigans are going to happen, that that things are, are too chaotic right now for it to go without a hitch. <laughs> shenanigans uh, is such an understated way of putting uh, the whole fate of the world and security. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's I literally that how he talks. That's literally, mm. he, he says, like, well, uh, shenanigans may, may ensue. <laughs> uh, he has it's a, just the a end of the world. Accent. Don't worry about it. It's just shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Bell's kind of, uh, sort of, uh, is you know, sort of pats Pet's hand and and in a kind of an indication of put me down, please, um, uh, uh, and just kind of uh, 
Actually, he 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 points at a, a a table or something close to the party and then says, "Put me down over there, please." <laughs> I, I'm I'm kind of not big enough to 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 get into a position as yet. Um, it's true. And then while they're kind of uh, to. There'll be time for explanations for my condition more to the to the people who are on yet aware right now at a later stage, but it's come it, it, it's become clear to me that the condition I'm in is kind of perfect for what's going to come come now because nobody will suspect a stuffed toy of being a spy. Hmm. Uh, it is true, you do not breathe, uh, and you can almost effortlessly appear to be a toy, because you literally are a toy. Uh, I just so, have to stand still, and I'm fine, it's, don't worry about yeah, it. Um, yeah. But I can also be carried by a child at a festival. That's um, true. So, <laughs> Bell, Bell's, Bell's plan, at least, you know, the one he's come up with in his head for the... Uh, the, the the discussion for the rest of the group is, you know, that Pet and Osphalor are just attendants at this festival, uh, with say a half orc as a quote unquote bodyguard because she is still someone of high status, um, which, you know, wouldn't be go astray uh, at least as far as I can tell. No one would really pay much attention to a noble mother and daughter out in a in a in a festival being trailed by their their bodyguard just the the half orc is a suggestion it could be anybody since you know everybody here is a is a martial art uh martial character um but you know somebody who would fit in in general with both osphalor's nobility and calumvor's uh environment so maybe even a thora would be a better bet but if that were the case they would be f- able to freely move around the festival listen to things while the rest of the crew is being on overt security you know, around the edges or, or whatever somebody in amongst everybody because we already know that the cancer crone are "Quote unquote masters of infiltration, in terms of being cults, they can look like and become anybody. If we looked at the the harbor master, for example, from well from a long time ago, so somebody who is not easily recognizable as somebody from the group and party, because I'm fairly sure our party is somewhat famous at this point." Um, would be of help, especially one who can go and be anywhere as a stuffed toy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what's go- that that's that's how he explains it in terms of you know, it would make sense to have something like that. Plus, it means he can keep an eye on the people who he has unfortunately brought into this mess. It is kind of his fault. <laughs> no. um, I I I have a I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um. We have about we have about a week and a half before cities start getting destroyed, and we still don't know where the other half of the staff is. Am I getting that right? Well, theoretically, you do know where the other half of the staff is. It is well, theoretically underneath. Yes, but... It is underneath the Kraken's lair. Um, exactly where the Kraken's lair is. That is a question, uh, but that is right. where uh, Taka, when Taka created the crazy underground, uh, which, a- again, was corrupted. It was not their intention to make it like that. Right. Um, uh, they wanted to hide the other half of the staff, one for safety and also because it had become infected, literally with an undead presence uh, of the former thief known as Cackle. Right. But I guess my, 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 my main point is is that I, I, I mean no offense to your, your celebration, but I don't know that we have time for this. 
<laughs> it's a, it, we, I, hey, I, I am not here to railroad y'all. That that is no, no. I'm I'm just saying, I'm saying this to the group. I'm mm-hmm. actually saying this as a group. I don't think we have time for this. I mean, the fate of the world is at hand right now. That was kind of the last thing we want is more panic. We don't need this town getting upset. I think proceeding as normal is the best thing for everybody. It lets us get things done and it prevents this town from falling apart from or any further than it already has if we disrupt proceedings. I guess. I mean, that's, that's just my thoughts on it. And honestly, look where these people live and look what they've had to go through. Don't they deserve... A festival. I said, "Well, uh, uh, Constable, how how long does this festival last? Is it just for, for the night? Is it just it like is, a, a one day just, thing? Um, it is just for the day. Uh, theoretically, it is uh, the festival itself. Is that uh, many of the the people, especially uh, older, like say teenage children, will go and dive, and they will find what they call the perfect pearl, which is simply the best pearl." And they will bring it back to the, they will bring all of them, but especially the perfect pearl, they will bring back to the uh, statue of Isis. Okay. Uh, and uh, that, that is the conclusion of the ceremony. Of course, there are, you know, the, the, the usual games and festivals and all that sort of thing, uh, merriment. Uh, but it is, it is over the course of a single day. All right. Where is this, lovely? Where is the diving location for this? Because obviously we have a big nasty thing off the coast. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it, this takes place. Uh, it is it is less than a mile from the the main docks. There is an area that is known to to have uh, you know a fairly decent selection of pearls, uh, you know of of clams that may have oysters, I should say, and uh, the the people will go. It's it's left relatively undisturbed throughout the year so that uh for this very purpose uh so it is not far away uh the the thing <laughs> that appeared over the dock uh, if it is in its lair would be many miles into the sea uh having said that i am not so foolish as to think that all is well and that that's that's why i'm asking for your help yeah i i, I i'm i'm aware that you know that we're not calling you stupid, but where I'm personally, I'm, this is just as a player. I'm just aware that there is, there is the thing off the coast, and that as much as we want everything to look normal and be normal as possible for these innocent people, there's still a, a, a threat assessment to be taken about you know how safe these kids are to be diving in an ocean that we all know is home to something foul so just kind of tossing that up um in 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 my head because you know i I think these i do personally myself and my character do personally think these people deserve to have at least one day where they're not living under a cloak of fear Mm -hmm. but yeah but yeah as a group, we should come up with a with a risk assessment and and, and, and all that because if it's just one day, what, what's kind of the harm? That's all. Oh, that's all. That's all. Bellas can think, but he does have a brain made of wool at the moment. So mm-hmm. who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does anyone else have a an opinion on this? I like this. <laughs> okay. And after what all we've been what through, don't we deserve do? some downtime? <laughs> How do I help? I'm just saying, after all the stuff we've been through over the last few weeks, don't we deserve even just a couple of hours of downtime? How many days are left till the month timeline? Uh, ten days. Ten days left. Mm-hmm. And we're in Kalimvor, and so we need to restock our food supplies. So I think we should take a day to commune with our gods, find a way to fix distant bells, 
and prepare ourselves for what is ahead. And also run security for a huge party. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, Bells has his theory, but you know, if 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 that's not to your eyes liking, it's just you know. To be honest, Bells just wants to stick with the people he's kind of brought into danger. He's feeling slightly guilty about that. Especially a child. Whoops. Well, there, it, that is one interpretation, but also you did save them. So uh, just, yeah. just say, I, I, but that's how, that's how distant Bells feels. That's the important thing. That's what's going through Bells' yeah. head, yeah. He's just like, yeah, they, they saved them from vaporization, but, you know out of the frying pan into the fire, you know? <laughs> so, uh, to the, to the group at, at, at large, are y'all going to assist in the security of the, um, salt of the sea ceremony? Um, or are you not, or are you going to split the party and do both? Hmm. Um, security sounds fun. So Sounds like an easy day compared to what we're usually dealing with. <laughs> I would not say such things if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I, at the risk of cliches, but like, Bells is just like, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> mm. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm all for a day. Out of, of character. Out of, out of character. I'm hoping against hope and trusting against trust that Michael's just going to let us have a fun festival for one day <laughs> before he brings the wrath of a crack lithid <laughs> down on us. Right. Is this the part in the story where we have a melancholy celebration and everyone jumps around and dancing in slow motion and we all look at each other knowingly before the whole terrible yes. thing comes? <laughs> yes. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I want. And, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, for the sake of cliche story that I am go, I'm all for it. <laughs> I may be way off base, but that's just how I want this to play out. And I, after everything we've been through, I think we deserve it. But only if there's some slow motion dancing. Uh, yes, I think, I think I think we can do that. Uh, so y'all, uh, let's say that you make your way outside to begin preparations for the the the, the ceremony is the next day. Uh, you make your way outside, and as you do, Audrey comes walking towards y'all, and Penton, uh, in your head. For Zombie. the first time, you hear, Oh my, it's so good to see you, Penton. And that's where we'll end. Shaving <laughs> Armor, episode 146. Thank you all for Audrey, playing. Audrey 3 is a southern bale. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, there is so many voices you could have done, and you did the best one. <laughs> oh, Panton, I got the vapors. Oh, <laughs> oh God, God, I hope so. Very exciting. Yes, please. Oh, I so want that to be. Like, I so want that to be her voice. That has to be. Come on. Come on. It's, it, it, it's canon now. Ja Orcus jazz hands and Audrey 3 is a southern bell. Come on. Fingers crossed. Please, let's make we this happen. Y'all are going to have to uh, <laughs> listen for the next one to find out. Uh, speaking of listening to the next one, uh, where's somewhere that people can subscribe to Chafing Armor? Spotify. Spotify! I get my Spotify notifications every week. Uh, it's wonderful. YouTubes. We're on there. On the, you can listen to us on the YouTubes uh, and so many other places wherever. Uh, if And if you find that there's a, a podcatcher that we're not on, just shoot me a message. Uh, Mr. Corley at gmail.com and uh, let me know and I'll get us added. But uh, thank you all for playing. Thank, thank you for you, not sir. killing us. <laughs> and you can now find us on Patreon and yes. help us to defer the cost for our website and wiki and all the future fun that we're going to have and all for all the entertainment we're going to bring you. Uh, we'd love to have you come and join us on the Patreon and be part of that community. Exactly. Absolutely. There, there's a lot of fun there. We're, we're having an awesome time. Uh, Dare and I are posting fun stuff and 
Uh, I've got videos on there. I've got audio clips, all kinds of fun stuff. So join and us. And what's on that Patreon. link for us all again? Uh, that is an excellent question. As patreon.com I, slash chafing armor. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, you all have a good evening. Thank you for not killing us. Uh-huh. And we will roll with you soon. <laughs>